Here we are looking at uh, the black sand from the mining finds extracted with a magnet. And from looking at this and my prior experience, I can see that this is an amorphous grain. You can see this is a 30 micron scale. So this is really rather large. And being amorphous, uh, and I suspect metallic as we might find or metal oxide that we might find in a little while, this is similar to the amorphous core that was used by Tom Bearden in his Meg. So equivalently, the Wilhelm Müller resin potted mining finds, magnetic components, is essentially the same core that was used by Tom Bearden, although it's not one complete piece of glassy metal, but it is fragments suspended into a resin matrix. So I believe the Bedini motor references the Mueller motor patent. And so I think all of these things are related. And this is a very interesting finding in my view. So we're going to have a image from that. And then we are going to look at this with the SEM and see what we can find. So we go in here and uh, we will take a new spot here. And in theory, this should be metal oxide, iron, manganese, cobalt, maybe. Okay, so yeah, iron and manganese here. By weight, it is 23, 24% iron and manganese 1.5%. So I think what we'll do is we'll take a larger area and see what the kind of average of that is. Okay, that's settling out. We will take an area here. Just to get a good average of what it contains. So in a spot it was 22.2. In the air, it's 25.5 by weight iron, 1.6 roughly, 1.5 of manganese, and 27 or so of titanium. And it looks very much like a glassy material. We'll do a couple of zooming into these chunks, take a couple of images of various chunks, but I think they'll largely be the same. Okay, I think that's enough samples for that. So we'll take a couple more images. We'll go in a little bit closer to see how glassy this is. So this looks like a typically good area to look at. And we will zoom in a little closer. And this is very glassy. You can't see what I would call traditional crystal grains here. I 
took an image of that. And then we'll take some other parts of this black sand to see if a similar thing is occurring in other fragments. So we come here, go to a completely different area. And here's another chunk. It's actually attached to something else. Probably some major silicates. It's maybe the bearing rock. Uh, another one here. Another one here. Again, this this shows me it's quite glassy. There seems to be crystals here, but these are of a different material. So I'm going to have a look at this, and we'll see if we're looking at a similar type of metal oxide composite. Okay, take a picture of that. Okay, and then we will take some sample points on this as well. One small sample point and one area. So what have we got? Iron, manganese, titanium oxides, essentially. Gonna have a close look, there's some interesting structures here, so we'll have a quick look at that. Um, so yeah, that's settling pretty fast. since I stopped it doing anything. Do a little area over here. What do we see? Wow. Much more pure titanium and iron. Wow. This particular piece here is very rich in titanium. manganese concentration as well. Don't know why it's showing nitrogen there when there's none there. <laughs> we'll exclude that. <laughs> yes, very high iron and titanium concentrations here. So this had some uh, interesting structure in bands in it, so we're going to have a closer look at that. that is probably enough for that sample area. So we will go and look more closely at this area where we have these interesting, maybe phase states here. Yeah, possibly this area. And we'll go in.
Interesting. Lots of little triangles. Very, very interesting indeed. That is utterly fascinating to me, and for those that are following my work, you'll know why I think that's fascinating. <laughs> um, I think we want to take a bit more focus on that. Then I'll switch this to a map, and we will do a map of this area. Also, I think I'll just have a look at this with the SED to look at the structure a bit better. There we go. That is pretty awesome. There's definitely <laughs> triangular sections taken out of this. It's like a glass with these triangular sections taken out of it on various scales. Okay, so I'm going to do a mix here so we can see the elements. Right, and then we will go and do element analysis here. And what we're seeing here is, again, high concentrations of iron and titanium oxygen. That's basically it. This phase looks more titanium rich. And we'll have a look at this phase over here. A little bit of aluminium creeping in here. Not very many samples at this point, which means this will be less reliable. I highly doubt it's got technetium in there. I think that's just because the samples are low. I don't think that's technetium. I don't think it's got technetium in there. Okay, and then we'll do uh, a little sample point on here. See what this phase is. So this has got higher levels of iron in it. So there we go, we have a material that is clearly glassy, it does have some phases in that, um, but you get an understanding of why the motionless ele electromagnetic generator, MEG, I think I'm right in saying that, magnetic core used glassy metal and the fragments of this mining sand is effectively glassy, but it also has some interesting secondary components to it. And it was mining sand potted in resin that was the cause in the Wilhelm Müller, Bill Müller motor. Thank you very much for your time, and I will see you in the next video.